at the seventh episode of uh, uh, Some and Wine um, edition series, where uh, today we are going to uh, interview uh, a lady which uh, works in London, but comes from Greece. So we are going to talk about uh, a bit of Greece wine, uh, but also about uh, her uh, uh, history behind uh, um, her CV. I would like to uh, remember all of you that uh, the uh, Wine Doctor School is uh, ready on my website, so you can um, visit my website at www.antoniopalmarindo.com and you can enroll if you like. <laughs> Okay, so Effie, Effie, are you here? She's connected. Hello. Here we go. Hello, Effie Hello, Wine. Daniel. Hello, Hi. Effie Wine on Instagram. Nice to meet you, first of all. We don't know each other. Nice to meet you. No, we don't. We Thank don't you very much for having me today. <laughs> no, it's really my pleasure. Really excited to be here. It's my pleasure. So, uh, you want to introduce yourself to... Yeah. Uh, my crowd and also to absolutely uh, I don't know yeah <laughs> first of all hello everyone uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight it's really cool to have you all here um, my name is Effie I am Greek as Antonio mentioned uh, but I've been living in London for almost 10 years now uh, so I do feel my then, long... then you arrived in 2010 like exactly good, good, good. exactly and uh, and back then I was um, a viticulture and winemaking student uh, from, uh, uh, I started in Montpellier uh, in France and then oh, Geisenheim nice. in Germany. And uh, I came to London because uh, I was uh, researching the um, market of dry German Riesling for my master's uh, uh -huh. degree and for my thesis. And I thought, you know, that I would stay for like six months, I would find a job. Um, find out how London works out uh, and then I would go back to Germany do a PhD or something um, mm. but then I just didn't know how much I would fall in love with London <laughs> um, and uh, and weather than, uh, than Greece exactly uh, just slightly just <laughs> also slightly <laughs> um, and which uh, part of yeah, uh, Greece do you come from I come from uh, the capital Athens or uh, I come from Thessaloniki, it's in the north. Thessaloniki, yeah, in north, 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 right? So, yes. Um, and, uh, and I never looked back. I, I absolutely love the city. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, and then I started uh, working my way through WSET, so I did my level three. And last year I finished my diploma. Um, oh, fantastic. And, uh, and uh, for the past five years I've been working for yeah it's it's been quite a fascinating journey <laughs> yeah quite tough actually oh <laughs> yes <laughs> i think i didn't realize how tough it would be when i first uh, started mm -hmm. uh, but it was definitely an experience that we would 100 percent recommend mm -hmm. and um now i work for uh, mmd who are um a champagne and wine distributor and agent which um, then I discovered so. when I contacted yes. you. I want to say also <laughs> to the public that when I contacted you, I found out that we work basically uh, together. Exactly. And directly, but we work together. Yeah, because I'm, I'm buying uh, some wine from you. So, yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> and that's how what, what's so fascinating about London and the UK trade. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, it looks huge, but actually, it's so easy to meet new people and uh, you can find out how interconnected we all are in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because also in London, in the end, uh, we are uh, not the many that work in the exactly. wine trade. Uh, so, yeah, it's easy to, uh, to, uh, to meet uh, in uh, wine tasting. Uh, now, of course, there was uh, uh, this crazy two, three months. A little bit of it. <laughs> that we couldn't do. My last uh, wine tasting was uh, back in, uh, yeah, probably beginning of March. 
the fells. It could be the Sangiovese. The the fells fells wine tasting. Ah, the fells one. Yes, fells wine tasting. Yeah. This was my last one, and uh, and then the COVID came along, and uh, yeah, I'm drinking it all now. Uh, so well, yes, exactly. <laughs> I had to invent this uh, summer wine uh, uh, interview, so to uh, meet other people and to drink with uh, someone else, you know. <laughs> it, that's, it's so nice. It's such a great idea because you get to learn about new wines, new regions, you meet new people uh, as well. And uh, wine is so social. Uh, yeah, I mean, exactly. It's, and it's um, Thessaloniki, so you come from yes. Thessaloniki, you mentioned, which, uh, if I'm not wrong, is very close to one of, no, no, it's very close to my favorite area, wine region of Greece, which is Nausa. Nausa, <laughs> <Is that right? laughs> I was sure that you would say that, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, I right. love Nausa wine, I love Nausa wine, and actually, I here today is closed. I'm not drinking. Ah, the Lamaras. But the Lamara is here with me. I bought it. Uh, because it this from, makes from incredible wines. Where, where I work, because I took it uh, um, on the shelf uh, just a uh, couple of weeks ago, and uh, oh, lovely. one for me. Uh, so, Have yeah. you visited? Have you visited now, sir? Unfortunately, no, but I tasted few not wines yet. from there. No, not yet, not yet. I've been in uh, Athens uh, last year. Yes. Uh, then, uh, but I didn't visit any, any winery, you know, uh, close to Athens is no, yeah. there is no much. Uh, you have to go to no. the Peloponneso, where you have Namea, which I love as well. Of course. Uh, oh, you are so very well um, uh, up to date. Um, no, I love, I love Greek wine. I love Greek wow. wine. Wow! <laughs> I didn't study them from the WCT because, as you know, uh, there it's is a no tiny little section. There is, yeah, well. it's like, uh, from <laughs> like a, a page and a half. Santorini. That's it. <laughs> uh, no, I actually uh, researched myself and uh, I love Greek wine. Then, when I went to Greece, I was, uh, you know, uh, tasting uh, wine so much also because uh, in restaurants uh, top wines uh, were around 30 pounds 35 pounds so I was always getting the, the most yeah. expensive wine in the list <laughs> uh, my wife nice. was uh, telling me off all the time that I was spending <laughs> the and, uh, look they are so cheap I have to buy them exactly uh, so it's yeah, the were, value that you get is amazing. The value is amazing, yeah. Uh, more or less like in south of Italy in terms of yeah. uh, the, the the taxation, which is very low, and you you, you pay uh, a very good you get a very good value for the money. Absolutely. And uh, yes, then I also tasted some Rapsani. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, I found it a bit too probably. Uh, rich jammy. Yeah, it's a little bit more rustic. It has a little bit more of an old school style, I would say. Whereas Nausa with Dalamaras and Timnopoulos, you get more of the freshness and the vibrance of uh, Xinomavro. Yeah, um, the acidity, the tannins. I, I also, I mean, some books also say the same thing, but I really see Nausa like the Barolo of, of Greece. Yeah, uh, you absolutely. Agree? Hi. Absolutely, yeah. When I try to explain how Xinomavro from Nausa uh, mm -hmm. tastes, I usually say, you know, it's like, imagine something like a, Burg a clone between a Burgundian Pinot Noir and an mm -hmm. Italian Barolo, mm -hmm. uh, an Italian Nebbiolo from Barolo. Um, and um, Yeah, also and think, because you know, the, the climate is different, it's obviously uh, much exactly. warmer than Barolo and than Burgundy, obviously. Of course. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then I, I say, not the book say, but I say, I find Agiorgitico like the Barbera of Greece. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I completely see that. Deep yeah. color, but very smooth in a way, much uh, softer tannins, but quite, quite, uh, quite there. Uh, lovely uh, yeah, velvety mouthfeel. And which one are, uh, is uh, an appellation from Greece that you find uh, uh, very interesting, except probably Na Nausa, uh, Namea, and Santorini, which are probably the most, the three best famous. Absolutely, wine. yes. 
you find Santorini some other great definitely... varieties that you, you like, that you want to talk to me about? I would say that um, after this top three, and uh, yeah, of course, I mean, Santorini has, um, Santorini and a handful of their producers definitely opened the door uh, to the re to uh, Greek wine to the rest of the world because uh, they really modernized it. They were the pioneers. They revolutionized the field. Um, uh, but I think that Crete is definitely going to follow, and it has already started following. Um, okay. They have um, uh, first of all, they have fantastic indigenous grape varieties. Mm -hmm. um, we're talking about Vidiano, uh, Vidiano. which is uh, a white wine grape. Uh, it's, it performs beautifully in high altitude vineyards uh, that you can mm -hmm. find in Crete uh, with um, really um, roundness and um, white flowers and almost it can get like an oily texture uh, but still very fresh uh, and uh, usually you blend it mm -hmm. with Vilana uh, just to make it a little bit uh, more uh, refined let's say. Um, and then um, there are also two other uh, red grapes that uh, are really good. Uh, one is called Mandilari. Mandilari, and, I never had this one. Okay. Mandilari. It's, uh, it has like really um, ripe red fruit aromas. Uh, it can mm -hmm. have a bit of an, it's, it has that bit of that sexiness of like a animal type of, um, of uh, aromas. Mm -hmm. And it's again beautifully blended uh, with uh, Cotsifali, which is uh, much more about um, elegant flowers and much smoother and uh, lovely acidity. Um, okay. So um, uh, you can, you know, very quickly you get to find out that there are four graves indigenous to Crete, uh, usually around the, 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 um, the towns of Rethymno, and Heraclea, okay. so in the center and uh, uh, the east side of the island. And also, apart from that fact, I mean, Crete is, first of all, is absolutely beautiful. It's a stunning island uh, <laughs> with one of the, you know, with uh, um, one of the most exciting ancient civilizations, uh, the Minans. And um, so you get lots of tourism. Um, so people get to know the, the, the cuisine of the island and they get to learn the wines. Uh, but also because of its climate, it's mm -hmm. just so easy to apply organic viticulture. It's quite dry, has lovely winds. And, um, and um, it's just a, an amazing, um, it's an amazing island because not just it's not just about the grapes but also mm -hmm. about the people i find that the the union the association of wines of crete have done such a remarkable job in mm -hmm. um putting all this effort of the producers together and also you can find completely different wines you go to the island and you find people like uh, ikonomu uh, mm -hmm. who makes natural wines that you know uh, are incredibly um uh, you have a fantastic personality, really exuberant. And, you know, the moment that you try it, you, you definitely never forget them. Um, and uh, he's, he's quite the legend on the island. But at the same time, you find really fantastic, more commercial wines um, mm -hmm. so that they you can be much more affordable. They can, uh, it, it's very easy for people to discover them and, uh, and uh, experiment. So I, I think that Crete has that beautiful combination of uh, indigenous varieties, mm -hmm. uh, a beautiful island, um, high altitude vineyards, and uh, a really great mix of types uh, of personalities on the island. So from uh, really uh, easily affordable wines to quite, quite funky and, uh, and intense. Yeah, talk about funky wines from there. I actually, when I was in Athens, I went to the wine bar and uh, I said to the uh, sommelier there in the wine bar, it was a kind of posh wine bar in Athens, and they said, yeah. look, uh, up to you, give me whatever uh -huh. you think. Is I good. love that. The, things he, uh, the, the first things he put out uh, was an Aoussa. He said, ah, ah. 
I, okay, the Hosa, but because I know, give me something else. The second bottle, it took me a, another indigenous grape variety, which is called the Limniona of Zaferakis. Zaferakis. Uh, I Amazing. used to have, uh, because I used to work in uh, Petrus, of course, or Ramsey at the time. Yes, of course. So, so when I went there, and I had it, <laughs> so you give me that, I said, oh, sorry. <laughs> Also this one I know very well. So give me that one. And that's why he started to get also pissed off. That's so because he won this guy. And then uh, basically he took a uh, white wine from Crete. It was a blend of it. grapes, um a slightly orange. Um and in these three grapes there there was two that you mentioned, the BD uh, yeah, no. The Diano and the, one, the Villa, yes, exactly. Both of them were, uh, while you were talking, I was trying to look for in uh, Vivino because I tried to store as uh, wine as possible when I taste it, uh, but I didn't find it now quickly. So yeah, okay. uh, I wanted to come up with the, with the winery. It was uh, a really, really interesting one, actually. It was the first and the last creek. Crete wine that I tasted. And um, yeah, it was very interesting. Uh, it was kind of, you know, being orange obviously had a bit more uh, um, uh, masculine profile, if you, if I can say that. Um, but yeah. Uh, the, another, Much more tannic. Another, yeah. yeah, with a touch of tannins, but it was very well balanced, well made wine, really, well made wine. Um, Beautiful. Another grape variety which uh, uh, I tasted uh, also a couple of times in Athens that uh, many uh, uh, like in wine shop or uh, um, wine bar they suggest me is the Mavro Tragano. Oh, perfect! Yeah, again, yeah. From a lovely from a lovely one from Santorini. It's also made from in, Santorini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also yeah, in tiny quantities, a lot, isn't it? Yeah, it's 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 incredible. I actually uh, used to work um, at Marcus Waring. I did a very a very short. Uh, um, I, I stayed there for a little bit, and uh, we did, we had Mavro Travano by Hadzidakis, and it was a sweet version. Sweet version, okay. Yes. <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, and I, Have you tasted many good. others of uh, Mavro Tragano? Not many. No, you, not you, many. Not um, many. I should have tr tried more. Uh, also I think because I was yeah, obsessed with that. To find the Greek wine, so uh, I think exactly. deserve much more attention. The Greek wine. Uh, uh, I Thank want you. To, Thank you. I want to uh, share something so from, uh, can you see now oh, here we go the, the, yeah, yes. I, get, I got it I, I was prepared for that oh lovely <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, so what we were talking about Naussa which uh, is there on the top in Macedonia we were talking about uh, a little mention of Santorini which uh, I don't see actually here in the back. Just a little bit below. Yeah, over there. Perfect. <laughs> ah, here, exactly. Here. <laughs> you can see also. Uh, then uh, Namea here in the Peloponneso with Agiorgitico, the Barbera Dalba of, uh, of Greece. And then I Crete, love that. Uh, the, the largest island of, uh, of Greece where they produce all these wines. Absolutely. And, uh, and uh, the Rapsani, which I taste a few, which is this little Yeah, area. in Thessaly. Yeah. Uh, also here there is uh, blended uh, Xino Mavro and uh, Mavro Tragano. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is uh, many things uh, to, to discover in this uh, country. Uh, what about the, the Rezzina? Oh, well, let me tell you. I have a, a bit of a soft spot for Rezzina. Yes. Because I did my bachelor thesis on Regina. Mm. Um, <laughs> really? <laughs> which is, wow, that's interesting. <laughs> which is a little bit um, uh, controversial, one would say. Yeah, uh, indeed. But basically, I studied uh, its uh, volatile uh, fraction uh, through mm -hmm. olfactometry. We were trying to analyze which were the main molecule, volatile molecules that contributed to that resin aroma. Uh -huh. um, anyway, and that's how I, at, f at first when I started talking to my professor, 
um, when she mentioned retina, you know, I was quite deflated. I was like, come on, it's my last year of university. I'm going to spend six months in a tiny little room uh, researching and you're giving me retina. <laughs> <laughs> so you can imagine I was quite, quite annoyed. And, mm -hmm. uh, but, th but then I started tasting the, the, the new wave of retina. Uh -huh. uh, which is completely different to what uh, one would uh, expect maybe 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So one of, my, one of the, my favorites, and I think that they are doing a fantastic uh, job, is Kehris. Uh, and um, basically, they have made a retina that is made from 100% acertico, mm -hmm. barrel-aged uh, with, um, with uh, resin pine, uh, that has all been handmade um, produced. So been, and, exactly. So and it was just know. so incredibly elegant and mm -hmm. uh, like a really serious wine. And it could be, I think, in in the UK it would retail about twenty to twenty five pounds, which is okay. incredibly expensive for a retina. Mm -hmm. So I think retina, it has obviously a very difficult reputation, and. Yeah. Uh, in a way, when I, yes, I, <laughs> exactly. I when, when I came to London and I started talking to wine consumers about German Riesling, mm -hmm. everyone thought that I was talking about Liebfraumilch, everyone thought that I was talking about the sweet, yeah. uh, flabby, uninteresting wine. And I find that, um, you know, I can see the same type of uh, reaction in people's faces when I say, Okay, so I'm going to serve you now a really exciting retina. And people go like, seriously, Effie? <laughs> we were expecting something more. And then they try it. And they're like, oh my God, I didn't expect anything like that. Um, so I think that there are people um, right now like uh, Milonas uh, and even Gea wines in Peloponnese. They make mm -hmm. their own uh, retina. Um, and Gechris, as I mentioned, and the, there is just so much innovation coming in and so much modernization of the wine. You mm -hmm. still get that very, you know, characteristic pine character, mm -hmm. but uh, in a much more elegant, in a much more flowery way. Um, and, uh, and I find that also because they keep so much freshness now. Um, it's really, it's an unbeatable pairing with, you know, like fried calamari, grilled octopus. Really? Um, Would you pair also, oh, nice. that's an interesting topic. So yeah. you would pair also with a kind of uh, seafood. Uh, Absolutely, party. yes. Yeah, that would be the perfect pairing. Um, and, um, and retina, yeah, I think, I think it's, um, it's a difficult one, but because of the fact that so many people are doing such a great job now, Mm -hmm. In a way, we can flip we can flip the problem on its head in a way, mm -hmm. and say to people, you know, retina is not what you think. Oh, well, mm -hmm. it, it used to be what you think it tastes like, but it's not anymore. So, uh, uh, for example, which one is the name of the producer that you mentioned? Because the uh, first one yeah. is called Kehris. Kehris, okay. Yeah. So yeah, they okay. even make a pesticide. I taste it once then. Yeah, yeah. A pet nut retina, which is fantastic. You can make like really lovely cocktails out of it. Um, okay. And they even they even produce the a rosé retina, and uh, you know just just for a bit of fun, just to throw mm -hmm. something new into the mix. And I thought I really like their approach. And Milonas in Athens in Attiki, um, he also makes one of the finest um, examples of retina. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and there are just so many young people coming into the mix and bringing their own version. Their own version, yeah, because it's something uh, is one of the oldest wine on this planet, basically. Exactly. All, uh, all started when uh, they had to basically close the, the vats, uh, the amphoras of, uh, of the wine. They didn't know how to yeah. close it and they, they used uh, as a glue the uh, yeah. raising of the of the pine trees but the pine tree was uh, you know i'm trying to explain to who is uh, watching uh, he was uh, spoiling the the wine and giving this a strong yeah. flavor of uh, retina and retina he, uh, also can be um, produced all around uh, greece anywhere 
right? Yeah, the, yeah. The weird appellation is just for that, is appellation by tradition, something like this. Exactly, like yeah, so. appellation by tradition. But you will mainly find it around uh, Attiki, yeah, around Athens. And okay. uh, the, they are the probably main a bit more. Yeah, they, it's usually made by Savatiano. Savatiano, and, uh, oh, okay. Herovitis. Um, but uh, there, there are others like um, Kechris, for example, who makes it uh, with, uh, who makes a, one of its cuvées with a Sirtico, which is, which is quite cool. Um, but yeah, I think, I think, you know, if, especially what, from what you find in London, you, uh, there is, I, I cannot remember the name of the producer right now. I'm mm -hmm. sure it starts with a K. Uh, Harvey Nichols, they have mm -hmm. a really interesting uh, retina um, that um, is flirting with a little bit of um, an orangey hue. So, okay. um, quite, no, quite, it's quite a funny one. Retina, and it was that one of uh, K. Chris, K. Chris Winery. That one yeah. was uh, his barrel age that you are, the you were. Yes, that's the one. Uh, the Tear of the Pine. The Tear of the Pine, yes. Of, uh, quite a poetic. Gumenissa. Title from Gumenissa. Uh, yes, no, it was my first and last retina, honestly. Um, wow. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I wasn't expecting something, uh, something like that, because the raising mm -hmm. uh, was uh, quite strong. Uh, you know, um, you know, I have to taste more, you know. It's Very like, old school. You know, yeah. when I first taste uh, the Pinot Noir, I, I'm not lying to you. I didn't like it. Now it's probably my favorite uh, red grape. Exactly. Uh, same thing with the Riesling. The Riesling, I didn't like in the beginning. Uh, it yeah, is a tough grape to like at first. It's not, it's not always a, a love at first sight. Because we are, we are, I know, I was, uh, especially, I was, uh, uh, I grew up with the Trebbiano de Bruzzo, which is very plain white wine that doesn't taste of much. And mm -hmm. when I taste Riesling, that was the kind of one. Like, woo! <laughs> <laughs> I said, what? The, no, 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 there's no problem. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on, exactly. <laughs> but then, of course, once you taste a couple of times and you start to understand what is good, what is best, and what is worse as well, so you... Yeah, that's true. To, to have an idea of what it is. Uh, okay, uh, the time actually is running. Uh, actually, I cannot long. believe that it's already set. Long, yeah, long. <laughs> that is time. crazy. Uh, as usual, I have to say what we are drinking. You are not drinking. Absolutely. But uh, let's uh, say that you are drinking the no, sorry, well, well, actually, <laughs> I, I have. I, I, I do have. I do have my Santorini familia from Hadzidakis here. Oh, all right, uh, fantastic. And um, it's actually a, a relatively new cuvée for them. Uh, okay. And because um, Haridimos Hadzidakis uh, uh, passed away a few years ah. ago, uh, but uh, his family, uh, like he has um, two daughters, uh, and a son, and um, they are all incredibly talented. They are all work in the winery, and mm -hmm. his um, and his uh, daughter Stella uh, worked mm -hmm. with uh, their um, enologist to make mm -hmm. a new cuvée, uh, hundred percent acidico again, and it stays forty days on its lees. Um, okay. Yeah. So it's quite magnificent. Uh, it's from two thousand eighteen. Um, and uh, I would definitely leave it for another two to three years uh, ah, to see how we will. For aging, basically. Right. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And, um, and and I just love their their uh, what they do with their winery and uh, their family is is absolutely incredible. Um, and you know, it's, it's one of these acerticos that. Uh, Where we can find we... this wine? Where we can find this wine? Uh, so I, I, I think 99%, uh, I got it from, uh, the wine society. No, I did buy it from the wine society as a, okay. as a consumer. I'm not sure where you would find it, um, on, in the entree, in, in restaurants and bars. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's, it's very small production. Uh, and I think that, uh, it, it sold out in like a week. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. The wine well, society. But uh, Hadzidakis is very popular in the on-trade. He's a cuvee uh, uh, number 15, 
is mm -hmm. quite widely available. And you can find uh, his, um, his wine either in Waitrose or Whole Foods. Um, okay. So, uh, um, yeah. So I have to, I you have to, mm. I have to check there in Whole Foods. Yeah. Yeah, I, what, I, what are you drinking? Uh, I'm drinking something, uh, I wanted to drink Nausa, but I didn't finish the wine of yesterday night, so <laughs> I'm still drinking that. Uh, something Italian uh, is uh, Rosso di Montalcino. Latte Gatta. Latte Gatta is a very small producer as well. Uh, he does uh, uh, 5,000 bottles of this, uh, wow. this uh, Rosso di Montalcino. Very, very uh, small producer. It's a family owned business. Uh, so, similar story of uh, uh, the wine that you choose. Very small familiar uh, business. Um, they do also uh, Brunello di Montalcino, uh, Brunello di Montalcino Riserva, uh, Nader Cuvée and then the Rosso di Montalcino. This is the, basically the, their entry. Um, it's around uh, 20 pound cost, so it's not uh, really uh, really entry level, let's say. Yeah, age, no, not at all. <laughs> age uh, 12 months uh, in uh, New York and then move into Slavonian Oak. So it's uh, something uh, very small. Um, as, I as to, uh, I think, the intensity on the nose is quite too much at the moment. I, it's uh -huh. 2017 and I really believe you have to leave it in the cellar for other two, three years before enjoying because you feel a bit too much the oak, the intensity is too aggressive and uh, I think it's too soft and a bit. Now yeah. it's, it's beautiful. It's a great wine, but it's some more, uh, uh, some more years to, to get better. Amazing. It's a lovely color as well. The color is it yes, looks incredible. It's a Sangiovese wow. uh, Grosso, so uh, basically yes. Brunello. And uh, yeah, it's quite uh, yeah, incredible. Very, uh, like very pale. Okay, thank you very much, Effie. There is Francesco. Thank you very much, Antonio. In our uh, back, uh, Francesco, would you like to ask any question to Effie? Perhaps uh, we have been talking about Greek wine. If you want, do it now because we are about to close. Francesco, mm -hmm. can you hear me? Ciao, Francesco. <laughs> Francesco Fantinel is. Uh, is a ghost is he here? <laughs> He's not here okay don't worry uh we close and uh, thank you very much effie and uh, thank you very much uh, it's been a fantastic 30 minutes uh of likewise I enjoyed it a lot education of greek wine so it's been very nice uh as i told you i love uh, greek wine i hope to meet you in person one day when uh, you finish and we go back to the real normality because now it's a bit uh, mid normality. It's a bit of, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So thank you very much again thank and uh, cheers. Thank you. Bye Cheers. Bye. Thank bye you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.